We are now discussing pi molecular systems. We have completed our discussion of polyatomic molecules with uh, sigma bonds only like methane and we have discussed our first molecule which has pi bonds that is uh, ethylene. Today we have extend, extend that discussion to butadiene. So, butadiene uh, of course is uh, a little more complicated than ethylene you can think it is like two ethylene moieties that are joined together. So, we will see how we get there and how we can build a Huckel theoretical description of a molecule like this. So, before that uh, just a small recap uh, in ethylene we have worked out wave functions and energy we had expressed the uh, molecular orbital pi molecular orbital as a linear combination of the 2 p orbitals on the 2 carbon atoms and we had obtained this kind of expressions. Psi plus the bonding orbital was 1 divided by root over 2 into 1 plus s multiplied by chi 1 plus chi 2 and psi minus the antibonding orbital turned out to be 1 divided by root over 2 into 1 minus s multiplied by chi 1 minus chi 2 and the associated energies were E plus equal to alpha plus beta divided by 1 plus s and E minus is alpha minus beta divided by 1 minus s. And here the interesting thing is that you do not need to know the Hamiltonian for a uh, Huckel theory. You actually work it out in terms of the integrals where Hamiltonian is just written as H. What do we do there? For equivalent carbon atoms we remember that H11 has to be equal to H22. We call this the Coulomb integral alpha and then we set it to 0 right because all measurements are with respect to alpha. And uh, H12 and H21 we said they are equal to each other and they are called the resonance integral. Uh, this is what gives us the stabilization because of pi bond formation. Of course, S12 and S21 are our uh, familiar overlap integral and S11 and S21 are just 1 because their uh, atomic orbitals are normalized. Okay. So, we have set alpha to be equal to 0 because that essentially is the energy of a pz orbital in the sigma framework of the ethylene. So, that is your starting point and beta as we said is delocalization energy and uh, we had uh, told you the value is minus 75 kilojoule per mole no need to remember this value what is important to remember is beta is a negative quantity and we discussed very briefly what we do with S. With that background let us go over to butadiene we have just added 2 carbon atoms and we have brought in 2 more p orbitals perpendicular to this molecular plane. What happens now is that everything remains the same is just that the secular determinant becomes larger. Earlier you had a 2 by 2 determinant now you have a 4 by 4 determinant. So, since the problem is a little more complicated it would help if you could uh, bring in some more simplifying factors and that is provided by Huckel theory. We have said already that we set Coulomb integral to 0. What we now say is that this Hij equal to Hji we said that to be resonance integral beta only for adjacent atoms and we considered them to be 0 for others because resonance integral basically gives us the energy for uh, delocalization of the electron over 2 atoms. Well, the electrons are actually delocalized over the entire atom, but remember these integrals have uh, 2 wave functions right integral uh, psi i h psi j that kind of an integral. What we are saying is that if i and j are adjacent to each other then that integral has uh, some value beta if you take 1 and 3 for example then the value is as good as 0. We are neglecting it because uh, after all these integrals are all worked out numerically. So, in, in uh, locations where say chi 1 has uh, not too much of value it does not matter what the value of h chi 3 is you are going to get a 0 and vice versa. So, only for adjacent atoms we set that this Hij and Hji are equal to beta for everything else it is just 0 right. It is an approximation, but it is an approximation that works to a very large extent and there is some logic to it. The logic is that we have to consider uh, we do not have to consider uh, atoms that are too far apart from each other when we build these uh, pairwise terms like this where we have 2 orbitals 2 atomic orbitals from 2 atoms and the Hamiltonian operator operating on one of them. 
So, that is the justification put in very very simple terms. Uh, now, uh, let us see what we have. Another thing that we need to worry about is overlap integral. Even overlap integral uh, in Huckel theory, uh, it is considered that by similar logic, overlap integral can have some non-zero value only for adjacent atoms. Chi 1 and chi 3 is not going to have too much of overlap anyway because the distance is already fixed by the sigma bonding network. They cannot come any closer. So, uh, as we have studied for uh, say H 2 or H 2 plus, uh, when they come close together then only the overlap integral uh, increases from 0 to some uh, determinable value. So, since 1 and 3 are far apart from each other anyway, we can set that overlap integral to be equal to 0. In fact, in the simplest version of Huckel theory that we are going to use, we are going to set all overlap integrals to be equal to 0. This might sound to be very arbitrary, but then let us think what kind of overlap we are talking about. We are talking about pi overlap like this, right? not sigma overlap like this. So, the distances between the two at centers is already fixed, we can, they cannot come closer than this and p orbitals are sort of held like this. So, how much will they overlap? Not much. That is why it is approximately set to be equal to 0. Of course, if you want more precise results, you cannot set them to be equal to 0 at least for nearest neighbors, but uh, for our purpose it is ok if we go with the simplest version of Huckel theory. Set overlap integral to be 0 as well. Coulomb integral of course is set to 0 as we said earlier. So, now this uh, determinant becomes very simple, right? So, for all these H11, H22, H33, H44, I can write alpha and then I can happily set them to be equal to 0. S11, S12 all that is happily equal to 0, we do not have to worry about them. So, what am I left with? I am left with uh, wherever we have beta. So, H12 uh, would be equal to beta right? and H12 occurs in two places H21 is equal to H21 as we said earlier. What about H13? H13 is going to be 0 because 1 and 3 are not adjacent to each other, do not have to bother about it. Similarly, H14 uh, the distance is even bigger, there is no way we can uh, we have to worry about those. But what about uh, say H23? H23 is not equal to 0, H23 actually is equal to beta because uh, 2 and 3 are adjacent to each other and H23 appears in two terms. Similarly, H34 also appears in two terms and they can be replaced as beta. So, what do I have now? What is the first term here? 0 minus 0. Second term is beta, then 0, 0. Then we have beta, well, this is beta minus ES12, right? So, that is equal to 0. ES11, remember, this is not equal to 0, I think I made a mistake there. S11 is just S that is equal to 1. So, here I have minus E, then I have uh, this is beta. So, this way we can uh, keep on writing and this is what we are left with alpha minus E beta 0 0 beta alpha minus E beta 0 0 beta alpha minus E beta 0 0 beta alpha minus E. Right? This is where we had started from. We said that we are going to uh, set H11, H22, H33, H44, th th those are actually alpha, we are going to set it to 0 later on. Then we said S11, S22, S33, S44, these are uh, all equal to 1. So, the first the diagonal terms become something like alpha minus E everywhere. Uh, then H12 is beta and this minus E S12 that becomes 0 because S12 is equal to 0. So, here H13 minus E S13 that is 0 anyway. So, we get alpha minus E beta 0 0 beta alpha minus E beta 0 0 beta alpha minus E beta 0 0 beta alpha minus E. So, this determinant is equal to 0. All right. Now, we will simplify this a little further before going uh, ahead. So, uh, how can I simplify? Uh, what happens if I divide say alpha minus E divided by, by B? If I uh, take some quantity x where x is alpha minus e divided by beta not b, I keep on saying b for beta uh, inadvertently please do not get confused, 
uh, when I see v in this context I actually mean beta. So, alpha minus e divided by beta I put it as x and now we have a nice determinant here x 1 0 0 1 x 1 1 0 1 x 1 0 0 1 x that determinant equal to 0. What is the next step? We should expand it. When we expand uh, I leave it to you to do the expansion by yourself it is not difficult I just show you the answer x to the power 4 minus 3 x square plus 1 equal to 0. Now please do not get daunted seeing x to the power 4 x to the power 4 is just x square square. So, this is really uh, a quadratic equation in x square is not it. So, we know how to solve quadratic equations we are going to proceed in the same way we are just going to write this as x square square of that minus 3 multiplied by x square plus 1 equal to 0. So, what is x square going to be then? x square will be minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4 ac uh, b square is 9 minus 4 ac is 5 plus minus root over b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 alpha that is uh, 2. This is your answer x square is equal to 3 plus minus root over 5 by 2 and fortunately root over 5 is less than 3. So, uh, we get all positive numbers here it does not matter whether you take the plus combination or minus combination you get all positive numbers and uh, that is good because if x square is negative then we end up getting something that is imaginary that is unphysical. So, if you take square root of this now you are going to get 4 roots for x and they are I leave it to you to calculate it plus minus 1.61804 plus minus 0 0.61804. I find this to be particularly amusing because the characteristics is the only thing that changes 1 and 0. Uh, after decimal point it is 61804 in both the when all, all 4 terms actually. So, that is what it is we have found the values of x. What is x by the way? x essentially is this if I set alpha to be equal to 0 x is what minus e divided by beta. So, uh, can I say that x is e in units of beta? Yeah. So, if it is 1.61804 that is the energy in units of beta keeping in mind that beta is a negative quantity. Okay. Now, uh, with that understanding we can draw the energy levels we have not drawn the wave functions yet we will get there, but we have drawn the energy levels. Uh, the center here is alpha equal to 0 we start calculations from here 0 0.61804 is really this uh, separation do not forget. Okay. Because after all the expression uh, does have alpha minus e kind of thing. So, and then this is 1.61804 even though I said it several times please remember plus 1.61804 beta actually means a negative quantity because beta is negative that is why it is uh, lower. Now, these are the energy levels what can I do now? I can fill in the electrons like we always do what how many pi electrons are there in butadiene 4 right. So, I can just put in like this I will draw in the conventional manner not worrying too much about those spin wave functions just draw like this. This is the configuration see for these two orbitals lower energy orbitals the energy is actually negative these are bonding orbitals for the higher two these are the anti bonding orbitals their energies are positive. So, we what we see here is that for butadiene the uh, pi electrons reside in bonding orbitals only right and you can calculate what the bond order is pi bond order is 2 and if this was a valence bond theoretical treatment uh, you would be able to uh, draw these uh, resonating structures very easily right. I will draw one because it is easy one resonating structure is something like this and this is the structure that I uh, uh, can draw without uh, much hassle. Let us see if I can draw the second one I think this is how you push the arrows. So, this is your second picture here the double bond is between uh, atoms 2 and 3 carbon atoms 2 and 3 here I have minus sign here I have plus sign and if you go exactly the same way then 
the other thing that you could draw is you just push the arrows the op in the opposite direction you can have minus plus. Please do not get confused we are discussing molecular orbital theory and now what I am drawing is really a valence bond description with resonance built in. Okay. I am just trying to do a comparison we are going to come to this very soon from the uh, molecular orbital picture. So, see which one of these three is going to contribute more naturally whenever there is charge separation we know that contribution is less. So, these two structures where you have the double bond in the middle that they are going to contribute less and the central one where you have double bond between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 that is going to be the major contributor. Remember this and let us see whether we get something similar at least qualitatively from the molecular orbital picture. But before we do that we need to talk about wave functions then only can we think about insights that we can get from the wave functions.